I can smell it and I can hear it. I can hear them starting to kind of open. There you go. Like that. That's the noise I can hear. In this video, we're going to show you a delicious recipe for wood-fired mussels with rosemary and parmesan bread bites. The mussels are going to be a little nod to more marinere, and we're going to make the heartiest, richest sauce you've ever had. So let's get started. We can cook mussels in a variety of ways in a wood-fired oven. This oven is currently up to 500 degrees Celsius. We've got a flame just kind of tickling away in the oven, and we've got some embers going on as well. We're going to use those embers to burn two leeks and two shallots. So these guys are going to go straight onto the embers and start blackening and charring. Good idea to have them somewhere where you can possibly reach them, or some good barbecue tongs that you can get them out with, because it is very hot in there. Garlic will just go horrible if we burn it. So we're going to double wrap it in foil. And that can now go straight on the fire as well, because we've wrapped it, OK? And we're going to leave those in there for about 15 minutes, OK? And what's going to happen is all that natural sweetness that's in the leeks, in the garlic, in the shallots, that's all going to come to the surface. So I've got a kilo here of lovely, delicious Cornish mussels that I've bought. These guys have been purged, all the sand is out of them, but what they do still have is some barnacles and beards on here. They will just pull off. If you're struggling, you can use a paring knife. So these guys have been washed under running water with a toothbrush. What you might find with the occasional mussel is that they'll be open. Give them a little tap with a knife, and then wait to see if they close. Doesn't. Dead. 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 So if they're open, don't eat them, don't cook them, just get rid of them. If you find any shells that are cracked or damaged as well, they can go in the bin. If you are going to go and pick your own as well, you should only do it in a month that has the letter R in it. So September, October, November, December, January, February, March, April. <gasps> that gives them a chance to kind of breed again and make more mussels. So these kilo mussels have been de-bearded, they've been washed thoroughly, and they're now ready to be cooked. Store them in the fridge, literally until the last minute you're going to cook them, OK? OK, let's have a look and see how our onions and our leeks and our garlic are getting on. So they've had about 15 minutes now. Our leeks are looking great. I mean, they say they look great, they look burnt, they look disgusting. But if we put our knife in, little paring knife in there, should feel really soft, really soft in the middle. We only use the bottom, we use the white of the leek. That's because the green is quite hard to wash. There's a lot of dirt in there. These are now like 90% sweetness from all that roasting, all that burning. OK, and the same with our shallot and our garlic as well. Our garlic can sit in there to the last possible minute when we're going to use it, so that's cool. Peel off that outer layer. That's what we want. This sweet, smouldering inside. And then just give him a really quick, rough chop. Same thing with the, uh, with the shallots. Just take the black bit off. And again, you can see some of this black, some of this soot, this is getting involved, but that's okay. It's a nice little hint of bitterness that we like. Okay, so for the garlic, just gonna lose this top bit, and then you've got this beautiful soft garlic in the middle. Okay, then likewise, that just gets a rough chop there. Um, they've all gone into the pan, chopped up in the pan, now we can add our mussels. So we've got a kilo of mussels. So again, quite often, you'll see a lot of mussel recipes call for you to get in the pan, ridiculously hot as you can, chuck the mussels in, lid on, and <laughs> steam away. That's a little bit of a myth, a little bit outdated. These guys are going to cook whether we go into a cold pan or a hot pan. But for me, they should go into a cold pan and be brought up to temperature. Because anything that's cooked that fast, that quickly, is going to tense up. We've got 30 grams of butter, unsalted butter. And we've got about 80 ml of white wine here. You can use any booze you want, really. You could use wine. The type of wine you choose will make a big difference. We've got a muscadet here. You can use cider. Cider's great. If you've got a local beer, you could use a local beer. And we're going to add a little bit of seasoning, just a little bit of salt and a little bit of black pepper. So this oven, this wood-fired oven, this delicious, sexy-looking wood-fired oven, is up to 500 degrees or about 900 degrees Fahrenheit. Cooking with wood or any solid fuels is never going to be an exact science, OK? So play about with it, learn to cook by feel, learn to kind of feel when your oven is at the correct temperature that you want it to be for what you're cooking. I'm going to sit those right by the fire, so you can see the fire's just kind of ticking. It's not a big, roaring, rolling flame like we'd have for Neapolitan pizzas, but we are at those temperatures, just with a smaller, less aggressive flame. So while that's cooking, we can get on with our Parmesan rosemary bread bites. So I've got about half a loaf of baguette there. I'm going to cut this into real rough shapes. Don't want any sort of evenness here. If you can do it without looking and without cutting your fingers, that's good. 
you just then, ah, no. <laughs> So all these edges, all these angles, they're gonna get covered in oil and they're gonna get covered in Parmesan cheese. Then when they hit the heat in there, they're gonna to start to crisp up. Kind of like cheesy croutons on the outside, but still really lovely soft bread in the middle. A little hit with some olive oil. A tiny pinch of salt. Bit of black pepper there as well. And we've got 40 grams of Parmesan cheese. The bits that are on the bottom of the tray, they're gonna be like little mini cheese on toasts without the toast, just crispy cheese. And we're gonna rip over a couple of sprigs of rosemary. Give it a good mix together. These guys are going to take about three or four minutes in total, so we can get them in now, alongside the mussels. Okay, so our mussels have been in there for about four, four and a half minutes, and now we're going to grab them out. Oh, they smell like the sea. And look at those guys. So you see, they've started to open up really nicely, and if you look at our sauce at the bottom, it's a lot more than the amount of wine we put in, isn't it? That's because that is mussel juice. So we've got 75 ml of cream, and back in for another minute, minute to two minutes, back in there. Okay, and in that same sort of time frame, our Parmesan bread bites are smelling cheesy, and they're crispy, can you hear that? Yeah. So our cheesy Parmesan bread bites are out, and now we're ready to get the mussels out. So that cream has had another kind of two minutes or so, and that's just gonna start to thicken the sauce slightly. It's not gonna be super thick, it's gonna be quite a runny, quite a wet sauce, but that's what we want because the more sauce, the more chance for these guys to absorb it. I like a lot of parsley with my mole, so chop some parsley, and we're just gonna squeeze over the juice of a lemon. So now give them a nice mix up. So if we look at the moles themselves, remember we started this on a low heat, and we brought it up to temperature, rather than that kind of screaming hot, get the mussels in there. So I don't know if everyone knows this already, but this was a re revelation to me, in that when you've eaten your first mussel, and you've got this empty shell, you can then use it pick out subsequent mussels. Imagine that. Oh. oh. Huh? When you make these incredible wood-fired mussels and Parmesan rosemary bread bites, don't forget to show us. Take your pictures, put it on social media, hashtag Gosney Kitchen so we can see it, and everyone's happy. Don't forget to hashtag Gosney Kitchen. We want to see what you're making in the Black Edition ovens, in the Rockbox ovens. We've got loads of exciting stuff coming in the next couple of years as well. A couple of years is probably a long period of time, isn't it? <laughs>